Black folks in America have a lowest home ownership rate at 47%. White Americans, 76%. Now, well, obviously, we could talk about student loan debt. We could talk about redlining and all those different things. But also, a lot of this is just the notion of you don't know what you don't know. So over the weekend, uh, um, uh, John Hope Bryan, founder of Operation Hope, sent out a couple of tweets. Um, it was to talk about this very issue. And I responded, um, and, I, and I talked about what's good debt. And then that led to a bunch of people commenting and weighing in and saying, oh, that's not right. If you, even if you buy a home, you don't really own the home. The bank owns the home. Some people call home ownership a racket. It was all this different stuff. And so I said, you know what? Let's actually have the conversation on the show um, where we can we can talk about it and we can if we can really walk folks through this. So joining us right now is John Hope Bryan, uh, founder of Operation Hope. He's been on the show uh, numerous times. John, always glad to have you back. Uh, welcome back to Atlanta, uh, my friend, the uh, the moral capital of America. <laughs> uh, absolutely, South. absolutely. So let's let, let's talk about this, John, because I remember a few years ago I got into this vigorous debate. Um, about student loan debt. Now, granted, I graduated December 1991. Tuition was a lot different then than it is, it is now. But I made the point to folks that I saw my student loan debt as good debt. Why mm -hmm. was that? <clears throat> because that, that college degree put me in a position uh, for the jobs that I've had. And if you look at if I added up the income that I have earned over the last 30 years um, since uh, graduating, I will, you know, that's a significant uh, amount of money. So I, if I compare that money to what my student loan debt was, I said that was good debt. I said, now, if I went out and got a $50,000 car right after I graduated, I said, that's bad debt. And I had this back and forth, and somebody was like, well, yeah, but what if you had no debt at all? I said, look, I couldn't have no debt conversation. Mom and daddy didn't have the money. Uh, it's not like uh, I had the money as well. I didn't have a full-ride scholarship. So we, and I said, and look, Congress hasn't passed free college, so that, that hasn't happened. So I said, but it, we do have to look at debt a different way, and you really were trying to help some folks with this uh, this weekend to understand the reality of home ownership and what the home means. Yeah. By the way, if there's going to be a, a serious discussion about reparations in this country, it probably should be K through college education um, for every black person in America, as long as they do something gainful and positive with that education, it gets written off as an investment. But that's a separate, separate topic, separate show. I was stunned, Roland, um, when we. I, I was. It was one in the morning. And um, I sent out a, a tweet um, that I thought was a non-issue, right? No big deal. Uh, I sent out this tweet that, uh, that, that white Americans have half, you know, half of white America has a mortgage as debt, and one in five black Americans have mortgage as debt, and that we need more good debt. And man, the internet, I'm sorry, Twitter just lit up. <laughs> and I couldn't figure out why. Like, What's the complication here? It makes no sense um, that we're having this conversation, particularly this part. Um, wait a minute. We shouldn't, we don't own the home. The bank owns a home. Uh, no, actually, that's not true. <laughs> it's just not true. Uh, the bank has a mortgage on your home. The, the bank does not participate in the uplift, the up the upside on your appreciation. They don't get the depreciation, which you write off your taxes. They don't get the appreciation, which is the equity between what you owe and what the house is worth now and what it is worth in the future. Um, in fact, I'll go one step further. So that's good debt. And in fact, the tax policy on home ownership is brilliant. Like. If you rent from me, and as you know, in my private commercial life, I'm the largest minority-controlled owner of single-family rental homes in America. Um, 
the Promise Homes Company, if you rent from me, uh, you're paying off my mortgages. All good. And I think I'm providing a good service as an affordable housing uh, owner. But I really want you to become an owner and not be paying off my debt. I want you to have your own mortgage debt that you pay off, and you write off in every payment you make, you're writing that off of your taxes. You get that money back. So you're getting the, the benefit of depreciation. You're getting the benefit of appreciation. The, pro, the house gains in value. By the way, Roland, you mentioned an auto loan, a Mercedes. You, get, you have a loan for on a Mercedes, and the loan is 26%. Like one of our uh, clients last week, we got him from a 26% interest down to 3% by getting his credit score up 80 points. But if you have a 26% interest or an 18% interest on your Mercedes, that's not a Mercedes, that's Mercedes payments. <laughs> Can I get an amen? Uh, <laughs> so so uh, the, 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 not only is that good debt, Roland, and, and not only did wealth in this country get created through real estate, I mean, when, when Europe sent folks over here with titles, as you know, Roland, a, a governor, all it really meant was, it's like AKA, governor AKA meant owns th tens of thousands of acres. If you were a mayor, or whatever the version of a mayor was back to change the title, AKA I own you know, thousands of acres. Every, it was all about land ownership. It was all about land ownership. And what did they have bring the slaves to work on? Land, right? So uh, that's where wealth came from in this country. And it was another misnomer. Somebody says, well, you know, billionaires don't have debt. What are you smoking? There is no billionaire on the planet who's a billionaire without good debt. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm, I, this obviously just lit me up because I'm just so heartbroken that my people are laboring under such bad information, that, which means we don't participate in the two things, Roland, that create uh, upward nobility. Here's two things that have never gone down in the history of America, real estate and the stock market. Now. Somebody, Roland, will say, watching the show, no, 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 not true. John's wrong. We had the Depression of 2009, the recession of 2009. We had this. Yes. Here's what happened. It went up, and it corrected and went down. Then what happened? It went up again <laughs> and corrected, and it's going to correct again, and it's going to go up again. These things, these two indexes, and education was probably the third one, Roland, have never reversed and gone the other way. The, so, the thing that the, the, the thing that um, e even the point that you were making about uh, being able to write off um, the, the interest on your taxes again, again it, it's sort of how you how how you look at that. Uh, I'll give an example um, when um, when I made the decision I, I'm gonna pay my house off my, my home in Texas. My, my my accountant said. I say don't do it. By the way, yeah, go but, ahead. <laughs> right, 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 right. The accountant told me don't do it because we because because the because we're getting the deductions. And I then sat down and I said, okay, I want you to tabulate the deductions. I said, what is it? They said, oh, well, it's the it's the interest that you're paying. I said, right. So I want you to multiply that by. 20 or whatever. I said, so you want me to keep paying the mortgage and keep paying that interest? Uh-huh. <laughs> I said, for the tax write-off, when if I pay the house off, I own it outright, and the only thing I'm paying annually are the property taxes, which can also be written off. So let me stop you. Let's be, let's be intentionally argumentative here. All right. So as brilliant as you are, and you're really brilliant, I did a whole video on, on your, your the, the genius of your publishing library. So, but as genius as you are, let's just be argumentative here. I'm going to say respectfully, you're not right enough. Because the beauty is that if you have leverage on that house, a good debt, debt good debt appreciates, is debt associated with something that appreciates. Bad debt is financing jewelry. <laughs> Bad debt is right. financing, uh, you know, uh, uh, sports tickets and financing a, a, a vacation, right? But be, but good debt is so. If your house is appreciating and your house and you have some debt against that house, seventy cents on the dollar, you have thirty cents against the seventy cents. But the house is a let's say the house doubles in value. If the if you own the house outright, okay, you doubled your money. But if you if the house doubles in value when you only have thirty cents in it, 
Well, my God, the, the multiple on that is through the roof because you have very little of your equity actually, at, your money at risk right. um, against the debt. Everybody who has succeeded in, the, in, in building legitimate wealth, please, if you're watching this, this documentation, this almost almost a documentary that Roland's doing here, if you're watching this program on Roland Martin Unfiltered, write this down. You can only build wealth in your sleep. You only build wealth by compounding. That's it. It's different, it's different from making money and getting paid and, and getting that check. I'm so tired of people saying I'm trying to get paid. So what Roland just described was peace of mind, okay? That's what Roland just described. I have a lot of my yes. celebrity friends. They want, they want, they, I, I own this house. Okay, okay, okay. But that's called peace yep. of mind, not peace well, of mind. It was, it was peace, it was, it was, it was peace of mind, but it was also thinking ahead in that my parents live there, my sister and her daughter. So there are three generations of my family lives there. House is paid off. Right. If, yeah. if, if anything, if anything happens to me, only thing has to be taken care of every year are property taxes. Okay. So and so and so the thing is, but again, that was a strategy in doing it. The problem, I the problem that 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 for me that I see, I think, with so many people, um, is that they throw stuff out there, and and also to the point, uh, like every every year when I get to get to get the property valuation. I mean, look, I've been getting phone calls for the last two years, text messages constantly, sell, 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 because there's a dearth of homes out there, available homes. And so folks have been trying to buy, we'll pay cash. I mean, they're throwing everything out there. Uh, I'll buy it. <laughs> so, so, so the, the, the thing that, that, that while well, the conversation to me was crazy, people going back and forth is that they kept, they were going through this whole thing of, of debt, 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 debt. And again, not understanding the notion of what is good and bad debt and how companies every year are financing debt, how companies are, uh, how they are, uh, how they're shifting, how they're getting, you know, uh, you know, lower interest on their debt. What, because, in fact, there have been some companies that have been purchased with debt. Um, and, some companies, and, 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 all companies. Well, right, right, right. And so, <laughs> and so the thing is, when I hear people say, uh, have, have this notion that, again, all debt is bad. That's why it was crazy because that's just simply not true. And by keep pushing it out there, you're basically doing the same thing to me. When I think when it comes to the vaccine, is that you're sharing misinformation and we're and you're not educating people on what's real and what's true. No, it's worse than that, Roland. We are we are we are uh, uh, predicting a, a lifetime of debt and poverty. Um, because your consumer debt is going to continue to rise. Bad credit cards and all that kind of stuff, that's going to continue to rise. But if you don't have something to offset that, which is an asset based on good debt that continues to rise, uh, then what you're going to end up with is zero net worth, nothing to pass, no generational wealth to pass on to your family. So one lady was like, I'm going to be a renter for the rest of my life. Okay, you're going to be poor for the rest of your life. Because the only way that the average person in America builds wealth, let me rephrase that, the most popular, most most credible route, factually uh, uh, documented, that the average American family builds wealth is through their home. Is the equity in their home? Where the where the, the equity that for the start of the business come from? From the home. What, where does where does somebody want to secure? You know, uh, you know, uh, your consumer loan from your equity from the home. You know, where, when you when you pass on the glory, God God bless you. That should happen. You know, happen. God bless your family. Then what? Where do they get the the, the largest uh, increase in wealth from the home? I have celebrity friends who brag about not having any debt on their properties, uh, and I tell them it's just not good use of cash to sit, to have two million dollars sitting in a building somewhere. It may make you feel good. But what have you taken? You know, seventy. It's two million dollar building. Put a one point five million dollar mortgage on it at good rates. If you have a good credit score, I'm talking about three percent money rolling. You know, it, I believe in God and God alone. But if I was if I was agnostic, I'd bow at the at the altar of low interest rates. Okay, I mean, if you can get two percent, three percent money, it's like somebody's giving you money. It's like free, right? And and if you have good credit score, seven hundred above, you can get three percent money right now. I'm, I'm in a house that has three percent money. It's I, mean, I don't know how the banks might making any money. But it's brilliant for me. And uh, I mean, I can tell you examples of how I took, well, there's a, a, a condo I had in LA. 
And um, uh, I bought it for a couple hundred thousand dollars. Uh, it's on La Tijera, for those watching you from Los Angeles. 7122 La Tijera, I think is the address. I don't own it anymore, so you don't, I don't give you the address. And you can go to public records and look at this. Bought it for 200000 and change, 15 years ago, whatever. Um, it went down in the economic crisis of 2009. All my black friends around me, sell, get rid of it. They all sold their stuff. They were afraid. They'd sell it, sell it, sell it. So I hold on, held on, because I needed some place to live back then. And I had a renter, sorry, renter in it. And so the renter was paying the mortgage, just enough to pay the mortgage and the property taxes. Actually, I think I had to pay a little bit of property taxes. Everybody said I was stupid. So, so now I owe more, Roland, than the value. I owe, now, now the value is, you know, 100 and something, and I owe, you know, you know, you know still 200,000, right? So I forget about it because it's taking care of itself and I'm getting a little depreciation. Roland, I looked up five years later, I sold that condo for $750,000. Free money. Free money. And it cost me nothing to keep it because it took care. If you, if you want to make sure you have a hedge against poverty, people watching this program, you need to do two in one. Buy a home and live in it like Roland's doing and pay it off just like Roland did if you want to. And then buy two homes, rehab them and rent them. And I don't mean fancy properties. I don't mean we need to stop buying stuff in places we don't know uh, with money we don't have to impress people we don't we we have no we have no idea about about stuff that don't matter. You need to stop profiling and renting uptown and buy something downtown in the inner city in a work a working neighborhood near jobs, right? And uh, buy the worst house in the best block, or yeah, the worst house in the best block in your neighborhood, and buy it, rehab it, and rent it. You will never go broke. That is, that or an engineering degree. You'll never go broke. You get your kid an engineering degree, they will never go broke. Uh, it, there's only 5% black engineers in this country, uh, right? And, and there's more jobs looking for people than the, than the other way around. And real estate, again, keeps going up, even in black neighborhoods. And I'm prima facie evidence of that. I own 700 homes in Atlanta and Florida, and I'm going to buy a bunch more. Uh, I'm telling every church, buy their block. Okay, I'm getting off the topic. Right now, when I'm hearing what Mr. Bryan is saying, I just wish that I don't know. I just have a question for you, Mr. Bryan. Like, what do you feel is the best way right now to get financial literacy out to our communities? Is it schools? Is it online programs? Is it YouTube courses? What's the best way to get what you're saying in the hands of more people so there isn't that Twitter storm out there? Yeah, we got to make smart sexy again. We've been mm -hmm. making dumb sexy for a long time, man. We've dumbed down and celebrated it. Quincy Jones says it takes 20 years to change a culture. His birthday was yesterday, by the way. And, and in the last 20 years, we've made dumb sexy. Yo, 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 what's up, what's up? You know what I'm saying? No, I don't know what you're saying, man. Speak in English, speak. Like, talk to me. Leave me better, right? If, if we, go to, we go to club tonight. I'm sorry, we, the COVID-approved the the COVID approved club. We go to club tonight, and we see the cute girl or the cute or the handsome guy. Hey, man, you, you're cute. Are you handsome? What's your credit score? <laughs> what's your business plan for your life? Are you, are you an owner? You have an ownership mentality. We need to, we need some we need to know what's in here and not just what's on here. And, and your excuse me, I can say this on Roland Martin and Filter. I think your assets cannot just be on your ass. We got to stop having oh, lifestyle riches. Lifestyle riches as a strategy is not riches. In fact, getting paid, as a young lady said, has nothing to do with building wealth. Zero. And so we got to make basically, sir, we got to get celebrities and ball players and folks who who for whom people pay attention to to really begin to bake this in, and it's beginning to happen. Uh, and I, I think we need to make financial literacy the civil rights issue of this generation. We need to make it uh, the, the, like the law funded by Congress, uh, K through college, free financial literacy. And I think Ms. Malvo will agree with, agree with me on this, and I think she's brilliant, by the way, long underrated, brilliant. I think we should have entry level introduction to entrepreneurship in high school. Because if you can't create, get a job, then let's help folks create them, which is why Operation Open is so passionate about One Million Black Business Initiative that we launched with Shopify to get all our businesses online. You know, 96% of our businesses don't have, don't have an employee. How do you build wealth that way? I mean, how, how do you do anything that way? You're just, you're on a treadmill. You're on a treadmill. And we're stressed out. We're exhausted. We're, and it's, what did Malcolm X say? We've been bamboozled. We've been tricked. We've been fooled. Here's another one. I mean, I just couldn't believe that we, we spent, Roland and I spent going back and forth. I think we rolling was a day and a half on Twitter. Yeah. With people. They were absolutely sure they were right, and they were wrong. It's just wrong. Everything that was said 
with all due respect, I love you very much, it's just dead wrong and somebody has to lay it out. So we got to make this appealing and interesting and, to, and here's the good news. People can still do it right now. They can. Uh, last point, John. You you said earlier you had a guy who had a Mercedes with a twenty six percent interest rate, and by raising his by raising his credit score eighty points, he went from twenty six percent interest rate to three percent. Three point five, three point five, three point seven. I put it on Twitter. I the exact number. Yeah, his his payment dropped like a rock, like a rock. So there's two ways to make money: make more or spend less. Do you know, Roland, that 41% of black people have a credit score below 620? Basically half of us. So when you go to the bank and the bank turns you down for a loan, not you, because you, you'll get you whatever you want, turn it down for a loan, we assume it's racism. Well, historically it has been. But right now, I think the gentleman said, uh, I want hair like his, by the way. You gotta, you gotta show me how to, how to do that. Uh, but you know, uh, the gentleman said, this is, but in, in 2021, my mother's credit score is 867. I think she told me two days ago, which means my mother's not black, she's green, right? <laughs> she can get anything she wants. It, 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 so, so if you can get your credit score up today, so the reason that they're giving decline may not be because you're black. It may be because your credit store stinks and the bank's not gonna tell you because they don't wanna be sued. Half of us are locked out of the free enterprise system. You can't get a small business loan unless you have a 700 credit score. Uh, uh, that's another show you need to do, which is this free money uh, coming to black people through this $1.9 trillion uh, uh, stimulus bill. That's a whole deal all by itself. That's a whole show all by itself. But, oh, oh but, we will. We will. Trust me, we will. Yeah, I'm just I'm just exercised about this, man, because I, I think we're living in a moment in history, like, like right now, but history doesn't feel historic when you're sitting in it. It just feels like another day. And I think if Dr. King was alive today, this, was, this is what he'd be obsessing with right now, and we never got the memo on money because the Freedmen's Bank, after the Civil War, after, Dr. after Lincoln was assassinated, it was closed. That bank was chartered to teach free slaves about money. So other than Mr. Ms. Malvo and a few others, there's nobody doing this advocation. Um, it, and meanwhile, the world is passing us by, Roland. There's a whole other show on just between cash flow and wealth, two completely Different things. I get so tired of you saying, I want to get this money. I want to get paid. I can get this dollar. I could care less about getting money. Let me build wealth. It'll create cash flow. <laughs> John Hope Bryan, founder of Operation Hope. Uh, we certainly appreciate it. Where can people get more information about Operation Hope? OperationHope.org. Or uh, download the Hope in Hand app on your phone. It's all free, by the way. There's no charge for these services. Or call 888-388-HOPE. Or just talk to Ms. Malvo, because she, 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 she can probably hook you up all by herself with her just some individual counseling. But we do counseling in 26 states for free. Well, folks, you can't say you didn't have the information uh, and you, no one ever told you about it. John Hope Brown, we still appreciate it. Thanks so very much.